Going under the knife for plastic surgery can be a huge leap of faith, even if you've done your research and you trust your doctor. Now there's technology that can let you preview the final result before surgery. Dr. Max Gomez from our New York station WCBS shows us how. They're considered some of the most distinguished works of art. Today, you can still commission a bust, but in an art form of a very different kind. If I didn't have this 3D print, I would not have underwent surgery. This bust of Emily Gorge was created by a three-dimensional printer, Mirror Me 3D. It's a perfect likeness, only better, says Gorge, because it shows what she'd look like with a smaller nose. With as many as a third of all plastic surgery patients unhappy with their results, new technology like this can give patients more realistic expectations. Particularly with the face where it's people are so, there's so much anxiety and stress around changes. It starts with a photograph that gets transformed into a hologram and results in a 3D model made out of a plaster-like material called gypsum. I'll show you my end result in a moment. It's helped both the patient and the doctor. Dr. Oren Tepper, a plastic and reconstructive surgeon with Montefiore Health System, says a hologram used to create the 3D model for the pre-op consultation can also be projected onto the patient's body during surgery using different colors to help doctors be more precise. And you can see that map, a real topographical map of what we hope to achieve. And this isn't just for cosmetic surgery. Well, the glasses are protective. But also reconstructive surgeries, like that of nine-year-old Jonathan Bridgnanon, who lost an eye to cancer. When I looked at the mirror, and then I saw, like, who, like, how do I get my eye back? The new technology helped Dr. Tepper rebuild his face and helped Jonathan understand the damage was only temporary. You like the way you look now? Yep. So great. Dr. Max joins us now. All right, so they did one for you. Right. You have a big reveal. The big reveal. Here, here is the new and improved, I guess, depending on your point of view. That's Dr. Max. Bus. So here's what they, they suggested. They thin my nose a little bit right mm -hmm. here. They shorten the tip a little bit, add a little filler kind of under <laughs> the eyes, raise, uh, raise my cheekbones a little bit, and extended the chin a little bit, which you might be able to see maybe a little bit more in profile like that. When, <clears throat> when you look at this, mm -hmm. what do you think? I think it's a little creepy, actually, <laughs> to, to see myself that way. But I look at it and I say, you know, it, it, the differences are subtle at best, really. But even small differences when it comes to cosmetic surgery can actually make a fairly significant difference in your appearance. Who pays for that? The patient pays for this. Now, this is not all that expensive, actually. Apparently, it can run depending on the size you get and how elaborate from 60 to just $300, and actually some people get it just because they think it's a work of art, not because they're doing any surgery. Well, that's, <laughs> that, I guess in the selfie culture, having a 3D exactly. model of your face makes perfect sense. <laughs> but if you're gonna get ready to shell out thousands of dollars to have a rhinoplasty, a nose right, job, right. or you wanna do something with your chin, and, and let's face it, some people, they grow up with a face and they realize uh, to be competitive in the business I want to be in, I want right. to present the best version of myself. 300 bucks seems like a good investment if you're getting ready to shell because out all that you money. Because then you can really see what it actually looks like on your face. It's one thing to see it on a computer screen. It's really another thing to see it here, sort of printed out in, in 3D like that. And, and then if you despise it, you can tell your doctor no way, no how. Well, well exactly. And also it, it gives you an idea. The doctor then has to sort of adjust the expectations because there's something you can say that I can I can you know I want my I want a tiny little button nose or I want to look like George Clooney or right. Jennifer Aniston in your case something like that I'm just making that up um, the doctor has to say well I might not be able to actually accomplish that in the operating room you can ask for it and I can stick it on a on a 3D model but I may not be able to actually do that what's your sense of how widespread this is among plastic surgeons this is still pretty new it's not all that widespread so far as, as so far as we know this is the only company doing it right now um, but if it if it starts to catch on and patients start coming in saying I want to see what I look like in 3D I'm sure it'll and, spread and I know that it used to be back in the day uh, plastic surgeons were sort of eyeballing you know mm -hmm. if you wanted cheek implants they're like okay let's move this one up a little bit and this one down how much does this help correct what could just be human error. Well, this helps some, somewhat with that. Also, the hologram that you saw in the piece helps with that because instead of coming in with a little magic marker and marking your face up that way, they can actually then project what they have already decided to do 
onto your face in the operating room, and that gives them a really much better idea of what needs to be done. What are you doing with your model? Oh, that's coming home with me. It's, yeah. it's uh, a that's little... You know, if you're, if you're suffering for a dinner companion, you know, he doesn't say a whole lot, but at least it's somebody to talk to over dinner. How often can you say to somebody, you know, you want to come up to my apartment and see something really strange? <laughs> Creepy. <laughs> Dr. Max, thank you. You got it.